Well, the view of justification that I hold is the view that has been held by Protestants since the Reformation, and that is that justification in New Testament teaching is God's declaration, his legal declaration, that we are not guilty in his sight, but righteous because of Christ bearing our, the guilt of our sins and the punishment for our sins, and Christ earning a life of perfect righteousness, a record of perfect righteousness for us. N.T. Wright and some others have come along with something called a new perspective on Paul, which has a different view of justification. The, um, the idea, they say, is that not that we're declared legally righteous, but that God declares us to be uh, part of his people, uh, members of the body of Christ. And my objection to that is that, first of all, the New Testament Greek words re translated as justify and justification, dikaio, sune, dikaio, don't ever take the meaning to include among a group of people. They are, they are terms that are used of legal declarations of conformity to a, a moral standard. So I think that that view of justification is unsupported by accurate analysis of the New Testament data. My concern about the new perspective on Paul led me to include a section, a longer section, on N.T. Wright's view of justification in this second edition of Systematic Theology. And, and here I quote from N.T. Wright, where he says, Justification denotes the verdict of God himself as to who really is a member of his people. And he realizes that this is different from much of church history, but he says, The discussions of justification in much of the history of the church, certainly since Augustine, got off on the wrong foot, and they have stayed there ever since. Now, Augustine lived 354 to 430 AD. Since then, the church has been wrong on justification. That's a shocking statement, but he's apparently not afraid to say that. Uh, it boils over into some other, or it, it includes some other differences. He says the basis of justification, now we traditionally as Protestants believe, Protestants believe that um, we're justified on the basis of Christ's redemptive work. He took our sin, penalty for our sin, and our, his righteousness was given to us, imputed to us. But he says, Wright says, the basis for justification in, in the future, on the last day, will be on the basis of the entire life. In other words, God works in us and makes us righteous, and then we produce a righteous life, and God judges us on the last day on the basis of our whole life lived. But that's really justification by works. That's not justification by faith in Christ. In addition, he denies that Christ's righteousness is imputed to us. He says, it makes no sense whatsoever to say that the judge in a law court imputes, imparts, bequeaths, conveys, or otherwise transfers his righteousness either to the plaintiff or the defendant. It's a category mistake to suppose that Jesus obeyed the law so he obtained righteousness which could be reckoned to those who believe in him. Well, that again is a denial of the doctrine of imputation of Christ's righteousness to us, which the church has believed, and I think the New Testament has taught for uh, centuries. And then Wright says the gospel is not about how to be saved. The gospel is not about how to be saved? No, it's a proclamation that Christ is Lord. Well, certainly the proclamation that Christ is Lord is good news, and it is, it is true, but I don't know if Wright ever in his writings explains what it is to trust in Jesus as one's personal Savior for forgiveness of sins. At least it's not evident in his major writings that I could find. And um, so that's, a, again, a serious uh, deviation from New Testament teaching. It's become quite popular in some academic circles and even among some evangelicals. It means that you're able to say that Jewish people aren't so different from us. They thought they were justified they were guiltless before God by His grace, and uh, they were obeying not to gain God's approval, but to gain, to, to maintain their presence among God's people. And there's less difference with the Roman Catholic view of justification, too, which includes ongoing progress in holiness during our life. It's an appealing thing from that standpoint, in that it downplays the differences between evangelical Protestants and uh, our Catholic and Jewish friends. But I think its fatal flaw is it's not faithful, not faithfully representing the New Testament teaching about justification. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 
our sin was transferred to Christ and Christ's righteousness was transferred to us. That's an accurate view of justification. And uh, I don't think it's accurately represented by the new perspective.